Hey everybody, welcome to another con support video. This time it's on linear models word problems. All right, let's go through it. Let's go. So it says here, um, Mar Mariana tried to drink a slushy as fast as she could. She drank the slushy at a rate of 4.5 millimeters per second. After 17 seconds, 148.5 milliliters of slushy remained. Okay, so let's investigate this one here. So uh, she basically was drinking at a rate of 4.5 milliliters per second. So the amount of slushy was reducing by 4.5 milliliters every one second. So that's your multiplier, right? That's her rate that she was drinking at. And it was, it was removing 4.5 milliliters of liquid every one second. So if X, if we say let X equal the number of seconds, right? Then that would be represented by the, the, um, term negative 4.5x, okay? Now, the y value is going to be the amount of liquid left in the drink, right? So this is the remaining liquid. So this is uh, our slushy um, in terms of liquid. Uh, so how many milliliters there is in the uh, slushy itself, right? So milliliters of slushy. And uh, then the uh, x is the number of seconds, right? So um, whatever her slushy was, basically, um, and at the start, we don't know, and that's what we got to kind of figure out, right? So there's this plus element, which is the B, the y-intercept, right? Which is the unknown, which is the amount of uh, slushy there was when she started, right? How much slushy was originally in the cup? So this is the original amount of slushy. So this is like the original amount of slushy in milliliters, okay? So that would be the y-intercept, right? It's where it starts. This is the rate at which it's declining or or the liquid's going down. And then you have the result, which is how much slushy is actually left currently after that period of time. So uh, that's kind of how we would think about the variables there and how they fit together. So it says how much slushy was originally in the cup. Now it tells us that after 17 seconds, 148.5 millimeters of slushy remain. So what that means is we know that the Y value is 185, sorry, 185, 148.5. We know that the uh, multiplier is negative 4.5 because she's drinking at 4.5 milliliters per second and it's removing that amount. And we know that after 17 seconds, um, the remaining amount was the 148.5. So she removed 4.5 times 17, basically, from the initial amount, whatever that initial amount is. And so basically we're going to solve for the missing uh, value of B. So just grab a calculator. Let's make it a little easy as possible here. So you're just going to say uh, in the calculator, 4.5 times uh, 17. We're going to get our answer of 76.5. So what you have there is you have 76.5. So we have 148.5 is um, equal to uh, negative 76.5 plus B. You want to then um, undo this minus 76.5. So we're going to add 76.5 to both sides. And if we add 76.5 to 148.5, what you're going to get is you're going to get the amount of slushy that was actually there originally, which was 225. So that means that the original amount of slushy was 225 milliliters, and that was the unknown, B, the y-intercept. So it asks us here, uh, how much slushy was originally in the cup? We can say 225 milliliters. And then how long did it take Mariana to drink all the slushy? Well, you just have to take the 225 and divide it by the rate at which she's drinking it, which is 4.5. So it would be 225 divided by the 4.5. And that would be 50. So after 50 seconds, she would have consumed the entire drink. So um, 50 seconds here. And that's it. So let's um, get into the next problem. If it... All right, this second problem says, Renata moved to her new home uh, a few years ago. Back then, the young oak tree in her backyard was 190 centimeters tall. She measured it once a year and found that it grew at a constant rate. Three years after she moved into the house, the tree was 274 centimeters tall. All right, so... Here's basically the situation. You've got Y being the um, height of the tree after a period of time. So this is the height 
in centimeters, or is it centimeters? Yeah, centimeters after a certain period of time of the tree, okay? The X is going to be the period of time or the unit of time. We'll, we'll say that that's going to be uh, years. So we're going to say that some rate, we don't know yet, times X, which is going to be the number of years after she moved in. So years after she moved in. And then uh, that is going to be plus the height of the tree when she moved in, right? Because the starting value is the height of the tree when she moved in. So um, it would be that it basically says here that back then the young tree uh, in her backyard was 190 centimeters tall. So this would be 190. Okay. So the only thing we're missing there is the rate of growth. Now we do know that it's at a constant rate. So that means that there is a constant multiplier there. So what we're trying to investigate is what is the slope, right? That's basically what we're trying to find there. What is that rate? What is the rate of growth? So it says, how fast did the tree grow? Well, let's find out. We know that it started at 190, and after three years, it was at 274. So let's plug into our equation all of our known values and solve for the unknown. We know that after three years, the total height was 274. We know that there was some number times the input, which was 3. Uh, plus 190, that would yield that 274 height after three years. So some amount of growth per year times the three years of growth plus the starting height all equals the total height after the three years. And now we can, of course, um, figure out what M is because we can just solve this equation like we always would. So take away 190 from both sides. And that's going to be 10 to get to 200 plus another 74. So you're looking at 84. So 84 is equal to 3 times m. You want to undo times by 3, so divide by 3 both sides. And you can see that m is going to be equal to. And the way I would do this is I would think that um, 3 times 30 is 90, and this is 6 less than that. And so that's 2 3s less than that, right? So it looks to me like that would be um, 28 probably, right? So 3 times 28 would be 60 plus 24, which is going to be 84. Yeah, 28. So we have uh, the M of 28, which basically means that this is growing at uh, 28 centimeters per year. That's our multiplier, okay? It's our unit rate, if you will, if it was proportional. But it's not, because it doesn't start at zero, zero. So in this case, we're going to say that this is growing at 28 centimeters per year. How many years passed from the time Renata moved in until the tree was 344 centimeters tall, okay? So now they want us to change this so that the total height of the tree is 344 and we know that now 28 times 3 plus 190 right uh, or 28 sorry, not times 3 times an unknown amount of time right so we can call that x is unknown right so we know that 34 is equal to 28 times some number of years plus 190 and we're going to solve for x to find out how long it would take for the tree to get to be 344 centimeters tall so you're going to subtract 190 from both sides that's going to be 10 to get to 200 plus another 144. So we're looking at 154. And that's equal to 28x. Divide by 28 both sides. And you're going to get our value of x, which happens to be in, uh, I can't really be bothered to do that one. So I'm just going to do 154 divided by 28 on the calculator. And you guys are always welcome to do that as well, as long as you show your process. So um, I did times. Whoops, 154 divided by 28. Okay, 5.5. So basically, five and a half years is how long it's going to take for the tree to get to be 344 centimeters tall. So this would be 5.5 years. And there's your answer. Okay. Now let's do the next one. Andrea has a, uh, a glass tank. First, he wants to put in some marbles, each of which has a volume of 0 0.04 liters. Then he wants to fill the tank with water until it's completely full. If he uses 50 marbles, he will have to add 33 liters of water. Okay, what is the volume of the tank? All right, so basically um, you've got this like total volume of the tank. That's kind of be the Y value, right? That's the volume of the tank. And so let me write that a little nicer, volume, there we go. So that's the volume of the tank and it's gonna be equal to um, the, it says first he wants to put in marbles, each of which costs 0 0.04 liters. All right. Then he wants to fill the tank with water until it's completely full. And it says um, he'll have to add 33 water, liters of water. And so we know that that 33 liters of water is um, basically 
a constant, right? He's going to add 33 liters of water. And all right, so that 33 is uh, the amount of water that's like a fixed amount right now, right? It's not dependent on anything else. The 50 marbles that he's going to use, it's 0 0.04 liters per marble. So when we're talking about that, that's going to be 0 0.04 for each marble, where X is the number of marbles, right? So I think that this is kind of uh, what we're talking about here, and this is the amount of water that's being used, okay? So it looks like something like this, basically, right? Where you've got 0 0.04 liters for every marble, X marbles are being used, and he's going to add 33 gallons or 33 liters of water, and then the total amount of that is going to be equal to the total volume in the um, glass tank. So it says here that it's going to be a full, in other words, we'll know the full value of Y when he has 50 marbles. So we know that 0 0.04 times 50 plus 33 is going to be equal to the total volume. All right, so let's just solve for the total volume. So uh, first things first, uh, basically times by 50 means like 0.4 times 5, right? So we're looking at 2. So I would think that that's going to be 2. I'm just going to double check that because I'm a bit tired today. So times 0 0.04, that's going to be 2, yeah. So we're looking at 2 uh, liters of volume provided by those marbles, and then additional 33 liters of volume provided by the water. And that means that the total amount of volume is going to be 35 liters of water. So it says here, what is the volume of the tank? And the volume of the tank is 35. It says, Andre has exactly 20 liters of water. How many marbles does he need to uh, so that the tank is full? So now they're saying, all right, he doesn't have the full 33, okay? He's not going to put in the 33 anymore. He's going to change that amount of water to just a maximum of 20. So he's going to put 20 liters of water in. And they're asking how many marbles you'd have to include then, right? What's the X value so that he would fill the tank? And we know that the filled tank is going to be 35 for Y. So we're going to replace the Y with 35. We know that that's equal to the number of marbles times the liters per marble, and then added the 20 liters from the water. And so we're just going to solve for X in this case. So in this case, we've got uh, 35 uh, let's minus 20 to both sides, make this quick and easy. So minus 20 to both sides, you've got basically 15 liters of water that you've got a, a volume that you have to accomplish with just the marbles. So you're going to divide both sides by 0 0.04, and that's going to give you your number of marbles that you need to include, which probably is a pretty hefty number. Let's take a look. So that's going to be 15 divided by 0 0.04, and you would need 375 marbles. It's a lot of marbles. Uh, to fill up the tank at to full volume only with 20 liters of water. So um, he would need 375 marbles if he only used 20 liters of water. And that's it. Uh, let's do the next one. All right, so this one says, Shota is a dangerous fellow who likes to go out rock climbing in active volcanoes. One time, when he was 30 meters below the edge of the volcano, he heard something rumbling. So he decided to climb up out of there as quickly as he could. He climbed up at a constant rate. After 4.5 seconds, he was uh, 7.5 meters below the edge of the volcano. Um, so basically, in this situation, right, the speed at which he's climbing is going to be your multiplier. And he's got to climb out of this, um, this full gap that he's in, right? So he's, he's basically 30 meters below the edge of the volcano, right? So if you think about it, um, all right, so when we look at this number, the 30, the 30 is a constant, right? At this moment, he's 30 below uh, the uh, escape height of the volcano. So that means is that he has this 30 um, units of height, meters, right, that he's got to basically get rid of, right? Um, so you can think of it like um, plus 30, uh, well, it says he's 30 minutes below, so I guess you could say, you know what, let's make that, let's make that uh, minus 30, right? So he's, because he's below. So he's down these 30 meters, right? So that's like a subtract 30 to, to get his height. We want him to get to basically zero to get out of there, right? And so he's climbing at 4.5, uh, 4, 4, 4, 4.5 seconds and uh, at a constant rate. So we know that the uh, time is going to be X. So this is the number of seconds. And the Y is going to be kind of um, his height, right? Where is he at uh, in terms of uh, the escape, right? So we can call this um, uh, the meters below, right? 
below the surface. Okay. Um, so basically, the y is going to be the meters below the surface. Um, and so if he was at zero seconds, right, no matter what his rate is, right, he would be at negative 30. He'd be 30, um, 30 feet below, 30 meters below the surface, right? Um, so I guess you could say actually, the, maybe instead of meters below the surface, you could just say that this is um, his current height. So maybe we just can change that to his current height. If I can get rid of that annoying text. One second, guys. So I think that this makes the most sense here. So is the y is his height in meters. Um, the uh, constant rate is m. We don't know what that is. The x is the number of seconds. And then the minus 30 is kind of where his current height is right now. So basically, he's 30 meters below the surface. Um, and so he wants to get to zero. That's his goal. And so now we can kind of plug into this and solve for any missing values we want, right? So it says basically um, that after 4.5 seconds, he was 7.5 meters below the edge of the volcano. So um, we can say then that um, after 4.5 seconds, so basically when the x is 4.5, we don't know the n. That's still an unknown. Uh, we know that he ends up being for uh, 7.5 below the edge. So that means he's still at negative 7.5, right? So he's not at negative 30 anymore, right? He's been climbing up, right? He's been adding for uh, for 4.5 seconds. He's been adding his to his height, right? But he's still not out of the volcano. He's still 7.5 below the surface of the volcano. So ultimately, this is the equation you'd be solving. So when you add 30 to both sides, you're going to see that that's going to be, um, what, two and a half to get to 10 and then an additional um, 20. So we're looking at 22.5 uh, is equal to 4.5 M. And so that's gonna tell us the speed at which he's climbing out of this uh, volcano. So now we're gonna solve for M by dividing both sides by 4.5. And so what is 22.5 divided by 4.5? 22.5 divided by 4.5 is uh, five. So that means that five is equal to m, all right? So what does that tell you? It tells you that he's climbing at five meters per second, right? So his speed is five meters per second at which he's climbing up out of the hole, right? So if he does that for four and a half seconds, he'll still be seven and a half meters below uh, the surface, okay? So here it says, uh, how, fa how fast did Shota climb? He climbed at five meters per second. In total, how long did it take Shota to reach the edge of the volcano? Well, he's at, at five meters per second, basically. Um, you want to figure out, all right, well, how far do we get to zero, right? So zero would be the edge, so replace y with zero. And we know that he's traveling at uh, basically five meters per second for an unknown number of seconds. And we know that we're going to subtract 30 because he starts 30 below. So we're just going to solve this equation for x, right? So you're going to add 30 to both sides. You're going to get 30 is equal to 5x and divide by 5. In other words, you're just going to take the rate, right, 5 meters per second, and say, okay, how many seconds does it take him to go up 30 feet, right? So 30 divided by 5. And so ultimately, when you do that, you're going to get 6. So it's going to take him 6 seconds to climb out of this volcano. So it's going to take him at that rate, 6 seconds to climb out of the volcano. And that's how you do the problem. So in all these problems, basically, you're just looking for what's the thing that's not going to change that becomes the constant element, usually a starting value. Uh, he starts 30, feet below, 30 meters below the surface, or the tree starts at this height. So that's going to be your constant, right, the y-intercept. When x is 0, that's what y is. And then there's going to be some kind of constant rate, and the constant rate is the multiplier of the slope. That's the growth rate. So you can think of the slope or the multiplier as how it's growing or changing. You can think of where it starts as the y-intercept. And that's kind of how it works.